Welcome to Funny for Money TV. I'm Zach Johnson. I'm standing here with my man Naeem Lynn. Nah, tell the people what what advice do you have for new and upcoming comedians? Niggas are still wet behind the ears. Uh, new comics. First of all, I don't like y'all. Like, like the further you get into the game, the more years you're doing, you know, then you really start to hate new comics. You know, we hate when you ask for advice. We do. <laughs> I give it. Only this is the only reason I give advice because when I was a new comic, I talked to this chick. Uh, her name is uh, Maya. She's Maya Giorgio or something like that. You know, she's an all right, funny chick, whatever. At that time, I was in school and I tried to highlight her, and she kind of blew me off. You know, and I was like, then because I was trying to, you know, I want to get into it. I need some advice. Yeah. She kind of blew me off, and now like I'm doing better than her. <laughs> so. <laughs> I would hate for some young guy to come up and ask me for some advice and then I blow him off and then one day he's doing some big things and he's laughing at me. So I don't want that. So new comics, all I can say is, you know, be original, watch other comics, and listen to what they're saying, don't write their shit down. Don't, say that again, please. Don't write their shit down. Thank some you. comics write, some comics write shit down. <laughs> don't steal. Don't use their ideas to make your own joke. That's called remixing. Just watch them. The importance in watching another comic is to know that somebody else has that joke that you're about to do. Watch them. People I hear people say I don't watch comics. It's bullshit. You're supposed to watch other people so that, especially if you're on the same show, because if you get on stage after them and you do a joke that's similar to theirs and you don't get to laugh, you're gonna wonder what the fuck just happened. It's because he just did that joke. So be original young comics, you know, watch, do your history. You know, do your study and study up on older comics. You know, you have to respect the game to be a part of it. That's how I feel about it. Just like basketball, it's like boxing. If you're a boxer, you need to watch fucking Floyd Patterson, Muhammad Ali. Yes, watch Richard Pryor, watch those comics, and be careful though when you watch that you don't borrow. You still have to be yourself. Don't it's borrow, all, don't remix. It's all about being who you are on stage. It took me a long time. I've been doing comedy almost 12 years. It took me a long time to find myself on stage. But I'm an asshole. And I've been able to bring that to the stage now. And it's me. You know, people, sometimes people expect me to be a certain way off stage or after the show. And I'm like, see, that means you weren't really listening <laughs> to the ignorant shit that I was saying on stage. Because you would know that I'm an asshole. You expect me to be all hunky dirty and dancing the jig and shit. I wasn't like that on stage. Big big as an act. You're confused because you were laughing. You have to laugh and listen. So, you've been doing comedy 12 years. Mm -hmm. What has been your worst moment on stage? My worst moment on stage, I used to have dreads. I used to have locks. They was like damn near down my back. And um, it, was a, it was a time, I was at that point in my career where I needed a change. You know, I wanted to be accepted by all, have a non-threatening look. So I cut my hair, and um, the first show I did after that, I fucking bombed. <laughs> I mean, like, Bob got booed off, off the stage. Where were you at? I was in Jersey. Okay. I've only been on stage for fucking five minutes, and these fat bitches, <laughs> I fucking hate you. If you ever see this, I hate you. I hope you, I hate you. These bitches is about five of them. They stood up, they did the Apollo shit. Wow. The DJ threw me off stage. And then the fucked up thing is, my boy that was with me, he was just doing a guest spot. He wasn't even booked for the show. He went up there and did his thing. And because he did his thing, he wanted to stay there after he got off stage. He drove. So I wanted to get the fuck out of there. I had to sit there with the I just bombed face for an hour while he did his victory lap. That was probably the worst. That's what, I got a couple other fucked up moments. That was, that was one of the worst. I wanted my hair back. I wanted to put my hair back on. And pull it forward. Yeah, I wanted to put it back on. I was, I was hurt by that. Give me your best moment on stage. Hmm. So far. Because you're still young in the game. Your best moment probably ain't even came yet, baby. But we talking about so far in 12 years. <coughs> but you'd be like, that night, that best was Best moment night. thus far, one of them is definitely my first time on stage. Got a standing no. It was in front of my, uh, it was at my school. So it was in front of my friends, my peers, and all that shit. And it was a great feeling to know that, you know, I could actually do this. Um, another great moment. <sighs> shit. I don't know. Oh, okay, I got you. 
when I did uh, the NBC show. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I won the NBC Stand Up for Diversity Showcase in 2006. Um, I made it to the finals in LA, and I actually had a great set. I had a perfect spot in the show. I was the climax of the show. I had a great set. After my dad was there, afterwards, all the managers and agents wanted to talk to me, and it was a great moment. And I was like a, a rip, the beginning of a ripple effect that led me to moving to LA and you know doing big things. So that was a great, great moment. And oh, oh, and what made it what made it even greater is that I quit my job less than a week before the audition for this thing. I quit my job, went out on the limb, I said, you know what, I gotta do this shit full time. You know, and it was it was a tough decision, but I did it. And the, like maybe like three days later, I did this show and I ended up winning. And it was like it was huge. It was like if I didn't quit my job, I wouldn't even have been there for this shit. I wouldn't even been there for the audition. So it just made sense. That was a great, great moment. Shit, it don't get much better than that. You heard it here from my man Naeem Lynn. This is Zach Johnson, Funny for Money TV. We out.